except for Thursday during the week. Um, we're still figuring out what time we'll do the streaming at. We're just trying a couple different times for now. Um, and then we'll move into uh, a set schedule in October. So we'll be streaming today and into this week, the rest of this week, and into next week. Um, I'm just going to check to make sure our sound is okay. Um, so you might hear a slight echo here for a second. All right, we're good. Stream looks good. All right, so today we are talking about our board game crate. So I'm super excited to talk about this and share it with anyone that has not seen this yet. Um, it's really cool to be able to put these together. We've done a couple now. Um, I'm going to go through the process of putting one together right now with you live. Um, well, reviewing the process because we kind of already have it together. Uh, it's We're putting some final things on it, and then we need to ship it out. We'll be shipping it out to Matthias in Japan, so I'm super excited. Um, and that would should get to him hopefully in like a week. Um, it takes a little bit longer to ship it internationally. And that's something I should mention too. We, with the board game crates, we cover the shipping for U S based, um, anyone in the 48 States, the continental United States. Uh, if you are outside of those States or internationally, we will be able to put together board game crate for you, but we may ask for, um, some help subsidize our shipping costs because it's super expensive to ship internationally. Um, but with that said, I'm super excited to get this out to Matthias in Japan. Um, and we're going to talk about how we put this together and what we do on our end and kind of share that process with you. So that's what today's stream's about. If you have any questions about it, you can always leave a comment below, send us a message. Um, happy to help. Uh, that's what we're really about at BGE's tabletop is creating that, friendly local game store in an online environment as well as when we transition into our brick and mortar store early next year so always excited to help find the right games for your gaming group or learning environment which is a lot of what we do here too so we're gonna go into uh i guess i have that overlay so we're, we're gonna jump straight into going over the uh, how to do the board game crate so if you're interested in this, um, you'll be able to find the link to our board game crates on our website. It should pop up in the right corner or in the middle on mobile. Um, it's also in the description of whether you're on Facebook on the top or YouTube on the bottom. Uh, it's not on Twitch, unfortunately, so you'll need to go to our website to, to get to the crate. Um, but you'll click on it. It'll create a pop-up window for you on our website and... If you go to the link, it'll just take you directly to this. Uh, it's kind of a survey or like a quiz. So it gives you kind of an overview of what to expect before you fill it out. Um, there's, depending on which which path you go down, there's about 12 to 15 questions. So not a, a lot of questions. And these questions really help us to gather more about you, your experience with games, your learning group's experience with games, um, how many players you're looking for as far as uh, what player count the game you're looking for. It also helps us understand whether you're looking for games for learning specifically or you're interested in maybe some games for fun, some games for entertainment, some games for building relationships in your learning environment instead of just content. Um, so we, we ask some of those questions. So you can go, let's go. Um, there's four different paths you can really go on. Um, this quiz program is really awesome, and we're going to kind of improve on it here soon, but you're able to go and veer off different paths based on questions you answer. Um, but we're, we're not that advanced yet, so really kind of depending on which one you choose here, it kind of sends you on a specific path. And then there are, there are some sub-questions um, within those paths too, but you don't really go off. Um, so this is really where you start the, the journey on the quiz. Um, so it's four different groups that we're kind of helping build board game crates for, which covers, I would say, the majority of, I don't really know any other, well, yeah. So the majority of gamers, I would say maybe like if you're looking for heavy, heavy strategy games, we don't have that path there. Um, so if you're looking for games to play with family or friends, 
Um, they're more lightweight, not as very heavy, intensive strategy. Um, games for, so that's this one. Games for your school or your classroom. Um, games for homeschool, so you're looking for games for learning content for homeschool specifically, or after school program, enrichment program, or larger groups. So we're going to choose one. We're going to go with the after school program because that's what I'm helping with this year. I'm um, doing a run club, so I'm going to go through this and like assume that I'm looking for games for my run club maybe. Maybe I have uh, a few times of the year that I want to play some games that might involve some sort of running or physical activity. Um, I'm very experienced. I know most of the board games out there. Um, overall, how experienced is your group with board games? So I would say I don't really know because I just started this run club. I'm So I'm going to go not very experienced. What are the ages of the players in your program? So I'm going to put high school here. Um, you can put an age range. You can put a uh, group, but just something that lets us know how old. We can do like 14 to 18 or high school. Um, you could put like grade eight, grade seven, um, whatever grade it might be. In your program, do your groups of players usually work with other players around the same age or do age groups mingle? Um, so I would say we're always in mixed age groups because it's high school. We have freshmen uh, in the run club all the way up to seniors. Um, what is the largest group size of in your program? So again, we've only had one day of the program of our club, I mean, um, and we had eight members in the club we have 15 registered so i'm gonna put just to be safe i'm gonna put 17 because we might get a couple more uh sign up what is the smallest group size in your program so i would say maybe on some days we might get eight um and you can type in here uh we normally have 15 people in our club but some days we could have a lower attendance so that's why I kind of keep it open instead of selecting numbers here. Um, that way you can you can explain a little bit if you want to. What is the total number of players in your program? So again, I'm going to put 17. What is the goal? Oh, I need to go back. What is the goal of using games as part of your program? Um, we are just looking for games to have fun with, games that are fun, engaging to practice soft skills, games that are targeting learning outcomes. So I'm going to go with games to have fun with. For your program, do you prefer competitive or collaborative games or both? I would say open to both. Are there any game publishers or lines of products you really enjoy? So this could be like um, Harry Potter games. Um, maybe different publishers like there's Haba, which is our publisher that we, we carry a lot of their games. You can see a couple behind us in the yellow boxes. Um, Jigamic is another publisher we carry. So you could include some different... Um, game publishers you'd like to, but I'm going to just do any. Um, and then is there a specific theme? So I would say we're looking for athletic oopsies, athletic games, body moving games, or games to use with running. Are you interested in mobile, multiple copies of a particular game to be played in several groups at once? I would say for us, I would say either option is okay. If I need to, to get two of the same game to accommodate my whole group, I would definitely be okay with that. But if you're like have 60 students um, in a – well, I guess I would lean to – if you're not sure about this one, I would lean to either option is okay because it's definitely something I can work through with you. Um, for my example, like uh, with 17 students, I would pay. For, I would get two games for sure if I could just manage it and not worry about modifying or changing the rules and just give each uh, each smaller group a game copy. Give us a quick overview. We are a running club. I'm just gonna leave this very short because I want to keep going. We are running. We are running a club. <laughs> okay, it's a typo. Um, is there anything specific about your program? If not, so for example, if I were looking for games for running, I have a couple examples that I would suggest that I would integrate as a part of the running club. So it it would not be a game that is like a running game, for example. Um, so I would say we are looking for games for games we can use during 
some meetups with our club. Um, and then finally it gives you the overview of which board game crate you might be interested in. For me, for the run club, I would definitely lean towards the lower end um, because we don't we don't meet a bunch. Um, we meet twice a week and it's for the semester and we're gonna be running a lot. So um, I might select that one. And then it'll just ask for your name, your phone number, and your email. So yeah, I can, let's just type it in there just so I can make sure. Ooh, that's a phone number. And then it, it should send you to our website, but I think that link there is broken. We've tried to fix it. It might be something with the program. Oh, it did. It sent us to the site. So it'll send you the site. I think you it, maybe the feedback I've received, it didn't work. Uh, maybe you just need to wait a little bit longer. Um, I already have a, a game in my cart because I was testing our site. So it should automatically add it to your site, uh, your cart, and you can just check out. Um, if you don't want to check out, that's fine. We'll reach out to you after you complete it as well. Um, and just to kind of go over what we do and how we how we build those crates. I'll go over that now too. Um, hi, Any. I just now noticed uh, your chat. Thanks for thanks for stopping in and saying hi. Um, so with the board game crate. Um, I'm excited to, to show you Matthias's crate and how we kind of put it together. We, so I received his survey and his, um, information, the data from the questions, and then I would reach out to you or I reached out to Matthias and we kind of chatted a little bit more, um, just to get some clarification about some of his goals with what games he's looking for and why, um, he's looking for games for his homeroom, um, classroom. And now I don't remember eighth grade. I was trying to remember what grade. I think it's eighth grade. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember. <laughs> I have the crate here. Oh, no, that's not his. Um, that's a different example. So um, I'm pretty sure it's eighth grade. I'm going to have to double check, but maybe I'll, I'll know from the games we look at again. Um, so I chatted with him to kind of understand his goals and what he's using the games for. Uh, we kind of worked through the idea that he wants to use some games that reinforce content, maybe content they're learning in his in the other classes, but he also wanted games for his homeroom that are good for building relationships. So we kind of looked at what games are great also for uh, sharing other cultures um, outside of Japan. And um, so, yeah, let's, let's actually go over to, I kind of wish uh, I would have pulled up the other one, but that's okay. We'll go over to the crate. move over here you could probably hear me a little bit right now so um we got the boxes back here for his crate uh shipping to japan again if you're looking for a crate and you're not um in the 48 continental united states let us know uh shipping can be expensive i'm working with matthias to get the shipping cost we i think we worked out something okay where it's not too much um but definitely reach out to us first if you're interested in a crate and you're not in the 48 states um, because the shipping is included for that um, all right let's talk about some of the games so I'm gonna go over and maybe just highlight a few of them so one poetry for Neanthal dolls this game's really cool uh, perfect for uh, Matthias and English language learners I, from when we've chatted last and I've kind of chatted with him about his classroom, their level's fairly high um, as far as language learners in Japan go. Um, but this game, so they you have to get your team to guess a word, but you can only use one syllable clue. So it's like you're, you're, uh, you're, write, you're writing a poem to get your team to guess. And if someone uses a word that is not one syllable, you get this little, let me show you, this little blow up uh, kind of club and someone gets to hit you over the head with it if you say, if you say, if you mess up. So a fun kind of uh, low stakes way of practicing English and having fun with mistakes, which is really important for learning. Um, another one that's uh, 
very much a relationship building game not not necessarily content based taco cat goat cheese pizza um it's kind of like slapjack if you've played that game every time you flip over a card you have to say taco the next person flips over a card says cat next person goat when what you say matches the card that you flip over that's when you get to take the cards or you give a card i can't remember um but essentially it's a good thing um and you're trying to win that way um Another one that I've had a lot of success with in my classroom when I was in Taiwan is are the unlock games. So these are awesome because um, it's, I think it says one to six players. It's like an escape room in a box. It's app based. So what's cool about this and why I liked it in the classroom is you can reuse the game. Um, you can use it again and again. So this one, the Island of Ghost, Island of Dr. Gorse, Gorse. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say you can play this game. It says one to six. I will say you can play it with like four to or uh, eight to ten people. Um, you can play it with a little bit more than what it suggests. I have not had a chance to do the other two yet. I've done a few others in the unlock series, but not these two specifically. Um, knowing this one, it pairs with these fairly well very similar theme style of game since it's the uh they release them in a series escape adventures um we also got a couple content based games astronomy flux and anatomy flux so some games for science track words another esl game team based game uh it says four to eight plus so i've used this game where i've broken up the group into three teams so that's really great for uh classes of up to 21 people i would say you probably get away with 21 students in one game um and maybe maybe 15 is like like a perfect number um but I think you can get away with about 21 students with just one game for that one. Uh, Guerrilla Marketing, another uh, marketing style or uh, party style language based games to practice a little bit of English. Um, so I'll do one more. This one is a good one because it's good for any, any classroom, anyone looking for a game remote or in person and it plays up to as many people as you want. So it comes with these little player sheets. I'm not sure how many it includes, 100. Um, so you can actually just make copies of that player sheet and all you need are these cards and you can play as many people as you want. You can really play with like a thousand people if you really wanted to. Um, so yeah, that is the crate. And now I'm gonna jump back over to the computer and show you one more thing we prepare for these crates. All right, so the last thing, we kind of showed this a little bit for a second. So this is really great because I think it helps with sharing your goals and your objectives, and it also outlines why we think these would be great for your learning environment or your game group. Um, we include every game that comes in your crate as well as some details about the game and why we chose it. So, for example, Untold Adventures Await. Um, this is a game where you use dice to create a story. And I recommend this is a great game that could be used as a fun exercise in creativity and storytelling. It can also be paired with content-related character development, plot, grammar, other related ELA learning outcomes. Um, and Kim from Tabletop Tolson has used this in her classroom as well. Um, I think her and her partner, she mentions. And um, so I included that why that might be a good game. I, I like to include other kind of outside resources because what we come up with isn't the end all way to use these games for learning. Um, so yeah, that is the board game crate. So that's how we put it together. That's how uh, we come up with what games are great for your learning environment. And we compile this kind of detailed list of, of the games that are in your crate as well. Um, if you have questions about how or questions about the crate or any other questions, feel free to leave us a comment, send us a message. You can reach out to us as well, games at boardgamingwitheducation.com. I'm going to...
put that in the chat as well, just so it's everywhere. Um, so yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. I think we're going to do a publisher's corner again tomorrow. So I'm excited to, to highlight another publisher. Um, we'll see though. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of want to do some painting, but I don't know. We'll see. We're going to start the day off tomorrow and see what we can get set up for our stream and see where the day takes us. Um, but let us know what other segments you've enjoyed so far. We've done Publisher's Corner. We've done Kick It with Kickstarter. We've done Mail Time. We did the Board Game Crate. So I'd love to hear from you what you've enjoyed. We did trivia yesterday. Um, what segments you really like. We're just trying a lot of different things. Um, and we're excited to continue with the stream and kind of get into a... A, a, uh, a schedule and routine and segments so that we'll do um, uh, regularly. There's the word I'm looking for. All right, so thank you. In